Sanders is currently being interviewed elsewhere. Now, he's been interviewed elsewhere pretty much every offseason and stayed with the SF. I have um, always found it interesting that for some reason, the way that Adam Peters has talked about is that every good pick that the 49ers have ever, ever made, Adam Peters did, and every bad pick, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan has done. And I don't know how that gets out because I assume that like when when they drafted Trey Lance, didn't Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch like not tell anyone in the organization? So I don't know how, you know, this guy making all the correct picks and these guys not is somehow public knowledge. And it makes me think maybe that's like a rumor that's made up that somehow makes Adam Peters look really good. Um, but do you think he's important to how how important do you think Adam Peters is to us? And this is a hypothetical question once again, because you don't know. And do you assume that he'll stay in San Francisco right now and that it would be maybe a detriment if he left? I, I know last season, uh, Rand Carthen left. So that'd be two, you know, major key players within the 49ers organization leaving in back-to-back -back years if he did leave. Yeah, uh, I think both the questions you asked are hypothetical um, because anybody who tells you they know Adam Peters' contribution to the 49ers – that's not within the 49ers and working for the organization is bullshitting you. They don't know. Nobody knows what Adam Peters is actually doing and how much value it's bringing to the organization. Here's what I do know about Adam Peters. And this is, you know, my interpretation of watching um, him. He's very savvy with the media. Why do I know that? Because two different executives have been poached from this staff in this regime. One was Rand Carthon a year ago. And two years before that, it was Martin Mayhew. Neither of those guys had constant articles describing how good they are at drafting yeah. or how good they are at doing something. So I know Adam Peters is good with the local media. He's able to get his story out there and his narrative out there. Then the second thing is, if Adam Peters was so important to this operation or whatever, they could have promoted him to GM when they promoted John Lynch. They chose to wait. They're choosing to allow him to go through an I interview process. I thought that was process. interesting. I don't, I don't necessarily know how important he is to the 49ers. But what I do know is that this idea that he's unlosable or something like that, I don't believe that. I think the mastermind behind the 49ers is Kyle Shanahan. I think philosophically they draft the way they do because it's Kyle, what's, it's Kyle Shanahan's vision. They coach the way they do because it's Kyle Shanahan's vision. Schematically, they look for certain archetypes at every position because it's Kyle Shanahan's vision. And I think as long as he's there and he's got people he trusts, the Niners operation is going to look very similar, whether Adam Peters leaves, whether Mike McDaniel leaves, whether Bobby Slowick leaves, all of these different people who could be individually excellent yeah. at their job all fall into something that supports Shanahan, in my opinion. I really, I, I like that. I mean, he even has an impact on the defense, right? We saw that right. this year with a lot of people maybe having initial doubts on how that would turn out but it is kind of all his mastermind. And I, I remember when they were having problems, they even talked about Kyle Shanahan was going to sit in more, on more defensive meetings. Um, kind of interesting for him to have that amount of power. It's also interesting, Adam Peters has, like we said, been interviewed by so many teams. And the narrative is kind of like he turns down those offers or pulls out of those offers because he wants to stay in SF. But that kind of makes me think of, is it more of a... Um, who was the OC in Kansas City who's now the Eric head coach? Enemy. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like the narrative around him for a little while was like, oh, like I want to stay here. And then eventually it was like, maybe he's not like if you're getting if you're always taking the offers and you're not getting hired, maybe there's like even if you're doing say you are making all the best picks, maybe you're not interviewing well or something. Um yeah, yeah. So I don't know about that. That's been reported allegedly about Eric the enemy. And then there's a few things in his past that people constantly bring up, which I don't necessarily yeah. buy because look at what's in Matt Patricia's past and that didn't stop the Detroit Lions from hiring him. Um, so I, 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 if anybody wants to do their research on both of those things, they can do that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to mention it. Um, yeah. What I will say about Peters is I think a lot of I feel the like hiring the only process. Peter's pick was Ambry Thomas, right? Didn't he that's himself what, come? Yeah, that's what John Lynch has told us right yeah. after the pick that it was he who pushed for that pick. But others, there was a rumor before the draft. I remember that he was the one that was smitten with Trey Lance, stuff yeah. like that. Who knows? But what I was going to say about Adam Peters, 
um, specific to this idea that he pulls out of these head coaching interviews and he wants to say, I, I'm not saying that isn't true. That could very well be true. But I also know that there's an optics involved in all of this because I saw the optics happen with the 49ers. I remember Brian Gutenkins pulling out of the GM job. I remember Nick Casario pulling out of the GM job. Now we got information after the fact that the Niners had agreed with Kyle Shanahan and they were looking for GMs to fulfill what Shanahan wanted, which wasn't what Gutenkins was looking for, which wasn't what Casario was looking for. And that's why these guys pulled their name out of the Niners GM search. But at the time, I think Ballard was another one that pulled his name out. Yeah. At the time, we got the impression nobody wants to work for Jed York. He's fired three different coaches and all of that. The optics play a big deal in all of this because you look better if you turn down a job rather than if you don't get yeah. a job. And I think that that's part of all of this. I don't know if Adam Peters is really staying because he wants to stay, but I think as much, as much as there's a possibility that he wants to stay and he's turning down jobs, there's also the possibility that he's never the top choice for any of these jobs in the first place. And he's simply pulling his name out of the hat after going for the interview because he doesn't want the bad optics of Adam Peters, you interviewed for this job and you didn't get it. That makes sense. That definitely makes sense. And, and like you said, and this could be maybe like some negotiating going on between them as well. But you are right, are correct in the way that when John Lynch was originally promoted to president of football operations, that they could have. And it seemed like potentially they were opening up that GM spot to keep Adam Peters and they didn't. And it's interesting. Maybe they are going, OK, well, this team's going to offer me this much. Will you match it type of thing? Yeah. Um, I mean, people, people have been do. clamoring it for it for two years. This has been a conversation. Oh, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. And when they ultimately promoted him and told us he was present, they slipped it in like week two after yeah. the Niners beat the Steelers, even though it had been done for a while because the optics was, yeah, that uh, was funny. from the Trey Lance situation were kind of remaining and creating. That was some when bad everyone got extensions too, right? Right, right. And but people they didn't were like upset because they thought it was because they won like three games. And then they were like, no, we actually did this. Yeah, but, but the point is they didn't they didn't promote Adam Peters then, yeah. and they could have done that, and they didn't do it. I, it is interesting. Do you do you think you think that even if he doesn't stay, nothing will substantially change because Kyle Shanahan is the brains of it all? I think something's going to change, right? You don't just lose people in any business and then simply just remain the same. Like the Niners talked about when they lost Mike McDaniel, they had an issue putting their plays in Excel, and that was an issue for them. My idea is that as long as Shanahan's there, they're going to find the solution for the people they lose. They're going to find a way to overcome the job that those people did. I think everybody's valuable to an operation, but everybody's valuable to an operation when a leader gives them a vision. And I think that's what Shanahan does for this organization. And I think Adam Peters fits a certain role and he does a good job at that role, but he do, he's only doing that role under yeah. two people who are the visionaries. He's not the visionary behind this football team. And therefore, I think as long as the visionary exists, you can constantly promote people to have a specific skill set and fit within and under that. I have a, another hypothetical, but it's a quick one. Do you believe that John Lynch is like with the team until they get a Super Bowl because he's kind of maybe trying to check that off? Or do you think it's like a competitor thing? Like, do you think he'll want to stay with the 49ers even if they win a Super Bowl? Or do you think he's the type of person that would want to maybe, you know, receive that goal of being able to win a Super Bowl at, in a managerial, nice pronunciation by me, position, um, and then he'll feel like fulfilled and want to retire? Or do you think that maybe – because he was a player, obviously an, an incredible player. So you assume he has that competitive drive to him that maybe he would want to continue with the 49ers even past just reaching that goal. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's been hinted at. I mean, he turned down money that I would never turn down from Amazon already to remain with the 49ers. I think the funny thing with him psychologically is everybody says John Lynch is the person that's accomplished everything he needs to. And therefore, once he wins a Super Bowl as the general manager, there's nothing left for him to conquer and he can just sit back and relax. And my argument is John Lynch doesn't become John Lynch, who's achieved everything he wants to if he, he has that mindset. Yeah, yeah. being able to sit back and relax. So I don't think it's as simple as, oh, now that he wins a Super Bowl, everything is satisfied for him and he can turn down the money and do that because um, they had won enough 
when he was offered the Amazon job, even though they didn't win a Super Bowl, for him to sit back, relax, and say goodbye. Um, he's clearly addicted to this in a different capacity than people realize. And if they win one, who's him? Who's not to say that he doesn't look at it and says, let's go win two? Yeah. Yeah. Run it back type of thing. I, I agree. I I find that people who have that competitive edge to them, it doesn't. it's not something that's easy to turn off. It doesn't matter if he has you know, like a nice, a nice house in San Diego. He, that's not what gets him out of bed in the morning, you know? Um, And, and I'm obviously speaking for someone I don't know, but I just mean, when you talk about players um, who have that sort of mindset, who have done, you know, had their own podcasts or biographies about them, it's kind of something that doesn't go away even after they stop playing. And so it's nice when they can find this competitive edge through something else. 